What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to do a tune-up on this hyper-tough two-cycle string trimmer that you can buy at Walmart. As you guys know, I absolutely love these cheap trimmers from Walmart. It's honestly one of my favorite trimmers. And to do this, we're gonna use this tune-up kit right here that I got off of Amazon. It's got everything in it that you need to do the tune-up. It comes with a spark plug, a fuel filter, three air filters so you'll have plenty to change as well as there's even a prime bulb and a fuel hose down in there. It's pretty nice, you'll have some extra parts to keep in hand. And you can actually buy this on Amazon. The link to this is in the description below. You will also need a spark plug gap tool. You can pick these up pretty cheaply at any auto parts store like O'Reilly's or AutoZone, what have you. I also recommend a spark plug socket just like this here to help you get it out, but that's not necessarily required. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually take the spark plug out and that'll be the first thing that we take out. For those of you that might be seeing this video or my channel for the first time, this is a Darwin's grip. You might ask what kind of fancy handle is that on there? That is a Darwin's grip. I will link a video to that at the end of this video. So the first thing you wanna do, looking at the trimmer right now, you wanna pop the spark plug coil boot off just like this by pulling it straight up. Now it is a little tight corners down in there as you guys can see. Especially considering I have a wire that's going in there and a zip tie holding that wire on. That's the only thing different that's probably going to be different from my trimmer versus yours. I put an hour meter on mine as you guys can see there. I have an hour meter on it so there's going to be some extra wires wrapped around here. So you don't necessarily have to do that. So you probably won't see that extra wire or that zip tie down in there on yours, but just note that it's exactly the same. When you put the spark plug socket on, you may have to move the boot out of the way just a little bit to get it on tightly. Once you have it on tight, go ahead and pop that baby loose with your ratchet. Now if you got it loose, you should be able to just take your fingers and spin it out just like that. And just like that, as you guys can see, it is pretty dirty, but it's actually not terrible. I've seen worse spark plugs before. As I said, I have been absolutely torturing this trimmer. I have never done a tune-up on this out of the two and a half years that I've owned this trimmer. I've never done this before. It still runs just as strong. It might take an extra two pulls to start it for the first time on the cold starts, but it still runs really, really good. Here you get a nice comparison of what a fresh spark plug looks like versus what a used one looks like. You can actually tell that this one was long overdue because it's not burning all the fuel as you guys can see right there. There's actually a little bit of fuel left on the spark plug and that means it's not burning it all off so this is probably long overdue. Now, before you put the new spark plug in, you do want to check its gap and I'll show you how to do that. So to check your spark plug gap, for those of you that don't know what the gap needs to be, just check your old spark plug. And in case you don't know how to do that, you're gonna stick the spark plug on the skinnier side. As you guys can see, there's a fat side and a skinnier side stick the part spark plug in the skinnier side until it stops and then whatever number it stops at on there will actually be the number of the gap as you can see my spark plug stopped just shy if I can get it to focus just shy of 24 to 25 so I'm gonna gap the new one just like that and you'll know it's set because you shouldn't be able to knock that off you should actually have to pull with some force and that's what it's set to again I'm gonna do the same thing for the brand new one if I can get the camera to ever focus in make sure the new one is set to about the same gap and then we'll install it all right so now we're gonna take our new fresh spark plug that has been gapped and we're gonna put it in it's always best to start it by hand so you don't strip any of the threads and we're gonna continue to spin it until it's completely hand tight and then after it's completely hand tight I'm gonna put my wrench back on it and I'm just gonna snug it a little bit you don't want it too tight because if you make it too tight you can again actually strip the threads as well as you can actually make that spark plug go too deep into the cylinder causing major problems. then you want to make sure that the boot is all the way back down on top of the spark plug securely So next we're gonna change the air filter now again I have not done this in the two and a half years that I've owned this trimmer at all I've really been putting it through hell so this air filter is definitely in need of change so you're just gonna pop that little button right here push it and this Cover will pop off just like that and as you guys can see there is the old one and there is the new one quite the difference it's also a good time to take some carb cleaner and clean out in here or at least clean out all the extra filth that might be in there. there's a little bit of oil and whatnot in there good time to clean it out I'm gonna take some of this carbon choke cleaner and just spray around here as well as the lid itself and then take a shop towel and wipe it off all right, so now that I got that cleaned out to my liking, we're gonna put the new air filter in it. Now, as you guys can see, there is a little flat spot on the air filter. It kind of makes a square all the way down to the end there. Really just gonna line that up with that area, just like this. The little flat spot should be down there to the bottom right. And you might have to use two hands to pull it and stretch it just a little bit to get it to fit in there perfectly, but it should sit in there pretty snug. As you guys can see, I can't really knock it out very easily. So it should fit in there just like that. And then you can take your cover and put it back on. There's two little slots right there. They fit into the two holes. 
holes, bottom of the cover first, and it will snap right back in place just like it did there and it's nice and secure. So now we're going to change the fuel filter inside it. Now that will start by taking the gas cap off. Now as you guys can see there is a little string in there and that's easy to pull out. Reach down in there and grab it and give it a nice little tug. You may have to shake it around a little bit and it'll come right out just like this right here. Trying to show you guys in live time, just like that right there. You can set this to the side someplace nice and safe. Now, this is easier to do when the gas tank is completely empty, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and empty this out in back into my gas can over there, and we'll continue after that. And be done with gas still in it, you just might make a little mess, as you guys can see. I'm at about a half a tank, and I'm gonna try and do it actually anyway. So I'm gonna reach my finger down in there, and there's two hoses. One is your fuel return, and then one is the actual fuel intake with the fuel filter, which you can see the fuel filter way down in there. So I'm gonna reach my finger in there and grab the hose and pull it back through. I do actually make a tool for this to help you grab it. Sometimes it's hard. It's like a screwdriver with a hook on the end. Might help you hook that hose to pull it back out. Once you've got a hold of it, go ahead and pull it completely out, just like this here, and there's the fuel filter. It is very important that you do not puncture this hose here at all. One benefit with this kit is you do have an extra hose that comes with it, but I still recommend keeping that for spares in case you need it. Don't puncture this hose because it'll actually create a vacuum problem. It'll stop sucking gas when it gets below a certain level. And here's a good comparison of the new one versus the old one. The old one's actually not that bad. It's covered in all the two-stroke oil on it, but compared to the new one, it really doesn't look that bad. There's maybe a little bit of dirt there, but not terrible. I really expected it to be worse. Yes, the new one is slightly bigger, but that's okay. It's very important, as you guys can see that ring, you do not lose that ring during this. So what you need to do is actually pull that ring back towards you, or you can pull it a little bit further down the gas line here, but do not lose that ring or the filter can actually fall off of this hose. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna try and pull it this way and take it off with the filter. Simply by grabbing it just like that. You saw it come down there and I'm gonna pinch the line, pull the filter, and then do it a little more until it's completely off. Just like that. Now be advised that there's probably gonna be a little bit of fuel dripping out of there, but not terrible. So we're gonna go ahead and discard this as well. And installing the new one is really easy. It's just the same thing as taking it off, just the backwards way. We're gonna push this all the way on and then secure that ring on. See, I pushed the ring back just a little bit to make it easier to put this on and get it on all the way. We're gonna squeeze this in there just like that. We're gonna lock it on, lock the ring on by grabbing the filter and pulling the ring and squeezing it just like that until it's locked in tight. It'll be locked in place. And then it's just a matter of feeding it back down in there and making sure that the filter gets all the way down into the bottom of the gas tank. Easiest way to do that is just by pushing it right back in and then making sure that it flips and goes all the way down. All the way down there in the bottom of the gas tank just like that. And then all of your old parts you can go ahead and throw away. And then put the gas cap back on simply by feeding one end through here just like that and bending one side slightly and pushing at the same time. And then popping it down in there. And you should be able to give it a slight tug and it shouldn't come out and that's how you know that's in there correct. And lastly there is one very important step that everybody forgets when they're doing tune-ups on their trimmers. And that's simply adding lube to the gearbox down here. To do this this time I will be using the Echo Red Armor gearbox lube. This is totally fine that this is made by Echo and this isn't an Echo brand trimmer. It works the exact same. It'll be just fine. Again the link to that will be down in the description below. So looking at your trimmer go all the way down to the head and the gearbox and there's actually a screw right here. So so if you're looking at the head just like this, there's the handle, come all the way down to the head, there's actually a screw right there. All you have to do is take that screw off and then add your lube inside that hole. So a Phillips screwdriver or the Phillips bit on the end of an impact or drill will work just fine. Go ahead and take this loose and take that screw out and don't lose that screw. And it's just a matter of adding the lube down in that hole just like this. Take the lid off of the lube. You're going to insert that. I did cut mine just a little too thick, but then you're going to insert that in the hole just like that and squeeze. Now you might have to apply a little pressure to it to make sure it all goes inside the gearbox. And you'll know when you have enough because it'll start actually coming outside of the gearbox itself as long as you're putting enough pressure into the gearbox to make sure it's actually all going in. And then when you pull the end out, you should be able to look in and see that it is really full of grease. Some of you guys may remember, I actually forgot to do it a long time ago and I burnt this up and I had to replace the gearbox on this trimmer. This was actually long overdue for this trimmer once again. Lastly, you just gotta put that screw back 
in and make sure it's tight to where it doesn't come back out. And now after that, all you have to do is add fuel and start it up and you're good to go. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful or entertaining. If it did, please smash that like button. If you guys could think of anything else you would like to see related to this HyperTuff trimmer or even any other HyperTuff brand, please comment it below. I am looking for suggestions and recommendations of what you guys would like to see. And I'll see what I can do on making the best entertaining video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, guys, thank y'all for watching and I will see y'all in the next video.